Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Force here with your game of the week. This week it is going to be Grid 2. This is a racing game that is the sequel to the award-winning original Grid. It was developed and published by Codemasters, a company that has a long storied history of making quality racing games, including Dirt, Formula One, Micro Machines, and the Colin McRae Rally series. Now I was a little bit nervous this week because I had some huge technical issues. Basically after a couple of minutes of gameplay, I, I was experiencing some major stuttering with this game. Well, I managed to fix that. I found a fix online that basically required me to make the game run on all processors. Uh, but technical stuff aside, the game's up and running perfectly fine now. It looks gorgeous, and I'm really excited to jump into the Game of the Week coverage of Grid 2. So we're going to start off here in this first video with some first impressions, which will just consist of me showing you guys a little bit of gameplay and giving you my initial thoughts. So we're going to be going on the very first race here, the California race, and we will be driving my current preferred car of choice, which is the Ford Mustang Mach 1 Twister Special. Uh, so I'd like to preface this video by saying two things. Number one, I know nothing about cars. Literally nothing. Like, I, I am the least educated person you'll ever meet when it comes to vehicles. The only thing I really know about cars is that I drive a, a 2005 Chevy Trailblazer, but that's that's about it. Uh, so my car knowledge is lacking. Also, I'm really bad at racing games, so expect a lot of crashing and, and just poor gameplay. But despite both those things, as weird as it may sound, I really like playing racing games. So I'm super stoked that this is the game of the week, uh, because from what I've played so far, it's really good. All right, so we're going to start off here. Basic standard stuff when it comes to the controls in this game. Uh, you're driving on the keyboard with W, A, S, and D. Uh, now, this game is also available on consoles, and playing with a gamepad is probably the preferred way to do it. Uh, but I like playing racing games with a keyboard. No mouse is included. Uh, there's no, essentially, there's no, nothing you would need the mouse for. You drive with W, A, S, D. Uh, there's a handbrake with a uh, space bar as well. There's the ability to toggle your camera and look behind you. But besides those few things, uh, there's nothing, you know, I guess special. You're not getting power-ups or anything like that. You don't need to uh, activate a speed boost. No nothing of that nature is available in this game. And you know it's funny because I just recently played another racing game. is the Need for Speed game that just came out. I'm sorry, the Fast and Furious game that just came out, and I thought it was terrible, and one of the complaints I leveled against the game was that there wasn't a lot to do. Um, I think the reason that's not a problem for me in this game is because the driving is just so fun, and the game looks absolutely gorgeous. This is actually running on the, uh, I believe it's the Ego 3.0 engine, which is the same engine used in Codemaster's last racing game, Dirt 3. And it just looks gorgeous. I mean, you know, that's something that you come to expect with racing games, but they definitely do a great job here in this game of just making a beautiful looking tracks and environments. And as uh, far as I can tell, there's a lot of licensed stuff as well. For example, you can race on the Indianapolis 500 track and stuff like that. Um, and it just, it just all looks absolutely fantastic. So really, really impressed with the visuals of this game. Uh, the driving as well is also fairly smooth. I came in second place here. And actually, speaking of the driving, uh, let me talk with you about the handling system that's used in this game. So they're actually using uh, a new handling system by the name of Truefeel. And if you're wondering, Force, is this like one of those super realistic driving games, or is this more of an arcadey one? Well, the Truefeel system that they, they have in this game is actually supposed to be a balance between the two. It's supposed to balance uh, traditional feeling. I think what they said when I was reading up about this system is that they use like 70 points of... Uh, 70 points of reference for every single vehicle when it comes to how it handles on different terrains at different speeds and things like that. Um, so it's 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 taking in some aspects of realism, but then it's also trying to make it more arcadey or more accessible, if you will, in terms of the driving. I was looking on the Steam forums briefly. I'm going to use the same car just for this one video because this is the car that I'm most comfortable with. Uh, so this is the one I like to drive with. But I was reading on the forums, there were some co complaints from people about uh, not being able to adjust Steam steering, I think, or something like that. Uh, that's that's a whole level deeper than, than I've ever gone into any racing game. So I'm not sure if that's something that you are concerned about or something that you care about. You might want to look into that, see what people are saying when it comes to hardcore uh, racing game enthusiasts, uh, how they feel about this game. But from more of a casual perspective, from someone who just enjoys the act of competing and racing events in video games, uh, I find this game to be an absolute blast. I've played it for about two hours so far. 
I haven't gotten very far because I've just played the first few missions a bunch of time, a bunch of times as I was trying to deal with all the tactical issues that I had earlier in the week. Um, but I, I, I've been really, really been enjoying it. I'm super stoked to really dive into things. There's a bunch of car. Oh my lord, what a terrible start! There's a bunch of car customization and stuff in this game, uh, which is really neat. And um, I'm gonna try to pass this guy here. A bunch of car customization, which we'll take a look at in further videos. There's also multiplayer uh, in this game, which we will also take a look at in a future video. And the one thing that I haven't shown you yet about the driving, now obviously you can probably tell just by looking at the UI, all the standard stuff. You've got your current position and stuff in the upper left uh, in comparison to the rest of the drivers. Uh, in, in the upper right, there's your current lap number and then the total number of laps, and then you've also got like time per... Ooh, what a... Man, that was awesome. Uh, you've also got... <laughs> You also have a, uh, a time per lap as well, so for every lap you get that time, you can beat your records and stuff like that. Gear and speed in the lower right, I told you I'm bad at driving games. Gear and speed in the lower right, and then there is a, a map of the track in the lower left. So the one thing I haven't shown you yet is the rewind system. Uh, the way this works is that if you do something terribly and you'd like to sort of take it back and continue along the race, you don't have to start the race all over. You don't even have to go all the way back to the last checkpoint. You can just utilize the rewind system. So I'm gonna actually crash on purpose here. So we're gonna go right into, let me just speed away here and crash right into this, just like this. Okay, so I can, what I do is I can hit backspace here and it's gonna rewind and then I can pick it up at any time before that white bar runs out. So we're just gonna hit backspace again and we're gonna pick it up right here. I probably should have picked it up after that straight away there because now I'm gonna crash just like that. Fantastic, let's try going back a little bit more. I, I, <laughs> I like to not do that if at all possible. Let me do it right here, okay, so. So yeah, that system, and you'll notice I've used it a couple times, so it went from the times five down to times three. So you've got a set limit in terms of how many times you can rewind. Now this game has five difficulties. I'm playing on the, the middle difficulty, so there's two lower and two higher than this. Now my assumption, other than the fact that the drivers are probably going to be more aggressive and drive faster in the higher difficulties, I also assume that the number of uh, rewinds that you get will be limited in the higher difficulties as well. Now I don't have, I don't know that for sure, but it, it would kind of make sense if that was the case. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that that is the case. Higher difficulties, you probably get less of a rewind. And you know, I'm sure there's some people who say, oh, that's cheap. You shouldn't be able to, you know, make up for your mistakes. But again, for someone like me, who's not a hardcore driving fan. Uh, playing driving games where whenever you crash you have to go back to the last checkpoint or even restart the match uh, It's just really frustrating. So the, the inclusion of this system. I think it, it adds to the accessibility of this style of a game But again, I'm not sure how the uh, super hardcore racing enthusiasts will feel about something like that Oh, man, I got some I got some all right drifting skills I got some all right drifting skills during certain parts uh, vehicle damage does exist in this game, and the way it works is that you can you can choose in the options whether you want it to be just a visual representation of damage or if you want it to actually affect your driving. I, ha I have it on at the moment, so the more damage my vehicle takes, uh, the more it actually affects my driving. And what will happen is if, for example, I take a ton of damage on the left side, my car will, will start to consistently lean left, and I'll have to c constantly adjust that while I'm trying to drive on the straight and narrow, basically. Um, so that's a pretty neat system. I like that you can actually have that option of, of having car damage affect the driving as well. But yeah, if I sound super enthusiastic, um, it's because I am. I, I just, I don't know what it is. And it's funny because I've only gotten into racing games for the past, over the past couple of years. You know, when I was a kid, I used to play, like back in my PlayStation days, I played Need for Speed. And there were some crazy racing games that I used to play on the N64. Uh, but between my like early teens and now, being a 27 year old, I really haven't played many racing games. But over the past couple of years, I've started to get into them and, and really started to enjoy them. And I'm having a blast with this game so far. So we'll show you, uh, we'll go ahead and do one more thing here. I'll show you a little bit more racing. Uh, there's actually a test track where whenever you unlock a new vehicle, you can go and test it just to see how it handles and, and figure all that stuff out. So I'm gonna hop on the test track really quick just to show you that. And then we're probably gonna wrap up with uh, one more one more round. So we've got the test drive here and we can choose the tier of vehicle that we want to do it with. Let's just start off with tier one here. 
got a one lap of the in Indianapolis sports circuit. And since I've been driving this car the entire time for this particular instant, instance, why don't we try something else? We'll give the, the Nissan here a try on the Indy track. Sounds good to me. Uh, so as we continue the game of the week coverage here of this game, we're going to go into car customization. We're going to take a look at multiplayer. I like to probably show you the different types of cars, which again, I'm just completely oblivious to. Don't know, don't know dilly squat about cars. Uh, but you know, that's just whatever. That's my, it's, it's just, I, I don't know. I, well, I'm going to stop talking about that. We're going to go ahead and hop in here. Uh, we're in the Indianapolis sports circuit power lap, one round, one lap. Now this game has a story. And essentially what it goes down to is you're, you're a single driver and you've got a sponsor who's trying to start up this driving league that's supposed to be like a worldwide premier league uh, for driving. And the idea is that you're competing in all these different events against driving organizations um, to try to sort of get their attention, to try to get their attention and have them come into your driving league or have them support the, the start, wow, this is great, have them support the start of your driving league. So that that's the sort of the, the story behind this game, if you will, if you want to say that a racing game has a story. This, that, that, that's that's what it would be. So yeah, you can come on here and test, test drive these different cars, see how they handle differently. <laughs> uh, why don't we rewind that and try that again? That's yeah, really funny. Okay, so we're going to pick it up right here. There we go. And it's, it's actually, that's kind of weird. They give you a limited number of rewinds even on the test driving. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like if you're testing, shouldn't they give you... Although I guess it, they're trying to keep it true to form to the actual racing that you would be doing with these cars. So maybe that's supposed to be what it is. And I guess these are supposed to be real licensed tracks. So this is supposed to look like the actual Indy Sports track does. Again, people shouting at their screens right now. You're making a video about a racing game and you don't know about the Indianapolis track or what it looks like? No, I, I don't. I'm sorry. I play video games. I don't really do much else. <laughs> uh, it's a sad life I lead. All right, guys. So this has been my first impressions video. Oh, no. Going into the sand. Uh, this has been my first impressions video of Grid 2. Uh, I'm really stoked to keep playing this game. I'm having a lot of fun with the driving so far. I think they've done a good job of that balance, you know, between realism and accessibility. It's just realistic enough so that I get frustrated when I take turns not properly and I crash into the wall because of it. But it's accessible enough that someone who's as big of a noob as myself can still do fairly decently. I'm sure that's a matter of opinion, though. So stay tuned, guys. Uh, throughout the rest of the week, we'll continue to dive into this game. And then once I finish it and I've got some uh, races under my belt, we'll be closing things up with my final impressions. Grid 2, game of the week for this week. Once again, the racing game sequel to Grid, developed and published by Codemasters. It is available now on the 360, PS3, and PC for $49.99. If you want to wait till my final impressions, that'll be coming in a few more days. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. And as always, oh, it's awful. Keep watching and keep on.